All right, good people, guess what just showed up in the studio? The Galaxy S20 Ultra. Supposedly, Samsung ran out of the retail sample units and they ended up sending me a pre-production model, uh, which is uh, kind of hilarious. Though I did confirm with Samsung Canada that uh, there are no hardware differences between this and of course the retail sample. And they did flash it with the latest software, with the latest version of Android uh, that's currently available on the retail models. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I set up a new Android smartphone. Uh, Cause a lot of you guys have been asking about what wallpapers I use, the icon packs, and just the process of setting it up. So that is what we're gonna be talking about. So let's get started right after this. The Razer Death Adder V2, the gaming icon that just got upgraded with a lighter body, next-gen sensor, and optical switches for maximum reliability and speed. The classic ergonomic shape handles like no other. Find out why 10 million other users love the Death Adder down below. All right, so before I transfer everything to the S20 Ultra or any other phone, there are a few things that I need to take care of on my existing phone before I pull out the SIM card. So currently I'm rocking the Pixel 4 XL and as you can see, this is what my home screen looks like. And yes, it doesn't look like the traditional stock Android setup, but my goal is to replicate this custom layout on the S20 Ultra. Don't worry, I'll walk you through my process from start to finish. Okay, so the first thing is pretty straightforward and that's obviously backing up all of your data. So that includes your photos, your music, messages, videos, everything that's on your existing phone. Now, typically with Google services, it is pretty straightforward and to an extent, already taken care of. I use Google Photos as my primary library for storing pictures and it does automatically get backed up to the cloud. Keep in mind, I do pay a yearly fee for cloud storage, but if that's not the case for you, I'd highly recommend backing it up directly to your computer. Next up is WhatsApp, since I use this on a regular basis to communicate with Dimitri and Mike and everyone else. So I'm gonna head over to the settings tab, tap on chats, and then hit chat backup. As you can see, I do have quite a bit of data that needs to be backed up. You can also choose to backup videos as well, so let me take care of that. With that out of the way, the next step is to back up my setup configuration using Nova Launcher. This allows me to remember the exact same icon placement along with my widgets, so I don't have to go through the process of rearranging them again. So what I do is hold on to the home screen for about two seconds, tap on settings, tap on backup and import, and then back up the configuration. I can rename it to my preference, and the best part is that I can either save it on the device or share it over email, which is what I typically do when I transfer phones. Finally, the last thing is to install Samsung's Smart Switch application on the Pixel 4 XL. So this is what I'll be using to transfer all of my apps and data to the new phone. Once that's done, it's time to pull out the SIM card off of the Pixel and pop it onto the S20 Ultra. Once the phone is booted, I usually go through the terms and conditions, set up Wi-Fi, and wait till it gets to the transfer option. You don't have to go through this if you're setting up a new phone for the very first time, but for most people, they probably tend to bring all their old data onto the new device. So you can do that by either plugging in a USB cable from one phone to another, or wirelessly. I chose the wired option as it's generally the fastest. I'm gonna quickly grab my Pixel, enable the file transfer protocol, and then open up Samsung Smart Switch. After that, it's just a matter of choosing what to transfer. In this case, I'm opting for everything, including messages, videos, photos, apps, and music. After about 20 minutes or so, you'll be taken to the home screen where you'll find all of your apps in classic Samsung style, but I'm not done yet. Samsung, as much as I love you guys, I just can't stand one UI. Now, don't get me wrong, it works out for a lot of people, but for me, I prefer cleaner setups where I can instantly access all of my frequently used apps and I think that's the beauty of Android. The user has the ultimate control when it comes to customizing their home screen and their widgets and all that kind of stuff, unlike iOS, which is just straight up boring. And yes, you can fight me on that in the comments. Now, instead of being logged down to Samsung's default launcher, I prefer using Nova Launcher Prime. It's $6 Canadian on the Play Store and it unlocks more customization options compared to the free version. You're welcome to try this out, but if you're not a fan of it, there are a handful of other launchers that are available on the Play Store that you can download for free, like Apex and a few other ones but Nova is typically what I like just because I'm used to it. Here, the phone automatically detected that there were two launchers, so I set Nova to be the default app, and I'm gonna skip through the setup for that because I'm gonna be restoring the backup that I created on the Pixel 4. But before we start doing that, there are a few things that needs to be taken care of on the S20 Ultra. 
First up is applying a system-wide dark theme, and I'm a fan of dark mode. This can be done by heading to the display tab and tapping on the dark mode. Pretty straightforward. Next up is changing the refresh rate on the S20 Ultra, because remember, Samsung ships out the S20, S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra with 60 Hertz enabled out of the box, so it's ultimately up to the user to go into the settings and enable the full 120 Hertz option. It's pretty simple. You can just head over to the motion smoothness tab and choose the 120 Hertz buttery smooth option and boy does it make a world of a difference. The phone just feels snappy and just wicked fast to every touch input, but I can make it even faster. You see, with every Android phone that I switch to, one of the first things that I do is enable developer options. This can be done by tapping on the build number five times until it unlocks that mode. Now, finding the build number option can vary from one phone to another. In some cases, you can easily get to it through the settings, whereas in other smartphones, you kind of have to dig deep through the settings to find it. Uh, in fact, you can actually go to your existing current Android smartphone that you're rocking right now and do that just uh, right away if you're thinking about making your phone just a little bit more snappier. This is a nice little trick. Follow through. So in the developer options, I scroll down until I find the animation scale settings. Here, I switch the window, transition, and animator duration scale to 0.5x. This cuts down the animation time throughout the operating system in half. So when you're opening up an app or opening up the app drawer, it just cuts the time that it takes for that app to load up or the app to pop up on the display by half, making the phone a lot more faster. The next step is to restore my home screen. And for that, I have to download the backup that I emailed myself. Once that's done, I just have to tap on it and use Nova Launcher to open that file. Keep in mind that it will erase your existing home screen layout. Give it a few seconds, and now we have the exact same layout as my Pixel 4. The icon size, the app drawer, the spacing, everything looks intact except for my widgets. For those of you wondering, I use KWGT Custom Widget Maker to run my widgets of choice. It's free, but there is a pro version that'll cost you an extra $6 Canadian. That'll get rid of ads. As for the widget of choice, I use the Pokemon 16 time and date widget from the Oshia KWGT pack. That was a mouthful, but uh, I just love the neon style of this widget and it goes along really well with the wallpaper that I'm about to set up on this phone. And trust me guys, there are a million of KWGT packs that are available on the Play Store. It's just, trust me, I've spent hours trying to find the right configuration for my phone. It can get super addicting and uh, you could potentially end up killing a lot of productivity time. So yeah, I just wanna give you a little bit of a word of advice when it comes to customizing. It's just, there's just a lot of options uh, with this widget. Now, speaking of wallpapers, this is something that I get questioned a lot on the channel uh, in terms of like, where do I get them from and if I could link them up. So uh, it just depends, right? I mean, I use different sources to get my wallpapers. Uh, primarily what I use, especially on an Android phone, is an app called Wallhaven. Um, it's actually quite nice. There's a lot of filters that you can go through and particularly choose what you're going for if you want something that's retro, minimalistic, or something that has a solid background. Believe it or not, I also use Pinterest for mobile wallpapers because uh, sometimes there are just some amazing wallpapers on Pinterest that you can just download on your smartphone. And so, yeah, I'll make sure to leave links to all of what I discussed, including the icon packs and all that stuff in the comments or in the description down below. My calendar widget of choice is called Your Calendar Widget. That's right. It's so obvious and it's easier to find on the Play Store, but uh, one of the things I like about this widget is that uh, there are different themes that it can choose from and I just love the simplicity of it. It doesn't, you know, take up too much space and yeah, I just overall like the transparency and just the way how it looks. And now onto the icon pack. I use Delta, which is free on the Play Store. I chose this primarily due to the support that it has for all the third-party apps that I have installed on the phone. Plus, I like the less vibrant look of the icons and it matches the setup that I have going on in the first place. Delta also offers a good collection of wallpapers as well if you're looking for a one-stop shop for everything. Keep in mind that a lot of the icon packs that you find on the Play Store require a third-party launcher like Nova Launcher or Apex or whatever, because you can't just load them onto your default launcher like Samsung's One UI or the Pixel Launcher. You need to have a third-party launcher for all the icon packs to install, because that's just something it's just something that you gotta do. Now, something that I did notice on the S20 Ultra is that some of the Google apps that I had used on a primary regular basis on the Pixel 4 weren't fully transferred or installed uh, on this new device. For instance, Google Calendar, Gboard, 
uh, Google Messages, which was my primary messaging app on the Pixel, uh, just wasn't on the S20 Ultra. So I had to manually go into the Play Store and download them. And it kind of makes sense because Samsung is sort of trying to filter out those Google applications because they have their own, uh, you know, Samsung Messages, Samsung Calendar, and all that kind of stuff. And they want to force you into using their ecosystem, but I'm not really into it because I use a lot of Google services and that's what I rely on. But yeah, that's something that I thought was uh, worth bringing up. Now, I was able to uninstall a lot of these Samsung bloatware pre-installed on the S20 Ultra, like Samsung Health, Samsung Smart Things, uh, also Samsung Globe, and a bunch of other Samsung-related apps. Uh, but there are a few Samsung apps that are still on the phone. I just straight up can't remove, like Samsung Calendar and all that stuff. So yeah, it's just something that I have to live with, but that's okay. And the last thing, of course, is to slap on a case on the S20 Ultra because I'm not really a fan of this glass back. So I picked up this cheap Anchor Slim Matte Black case from Amazon. I'll make sure to leave a link for this in the comments or in the description down below. It just goes on there. It gets rid of that huge camera bump, which, uh, which is kind of awesome. And uh, also, the phone's less slippery now, so that's kind of nice. So that's it, guys. That's how I set up an Android smartphone or just any other phone. I like to keep everything consistent, and I hope you were able to take away something from this video. And uh, potentially, I was able to answer questions about wallpapers and the icon packs that I use on my uh, smartphone videos. Uh, now that I have the S20 Ultra in hand, uh, do you guys have any questions or anything that you'd like to know as I'm testing this phone over a certain course of period? Definitely stay tuned for my long-term review of this device. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Can't wait to test that uh, 100x zoom feature on this phone. But either way, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ebro with Hardware Connects, signing off, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.